We are here with our My Life group tonight, and we are digging deep. And I know those of you that are around the world and you are in your life group, I know without a shadow of a doubt that tonight is going to be a blessing to you. I want to draw your attention to the book of Luke chapter 15. And in it, there is a story about the prodigal son. Now, those of you that have heard the series Spiritual Maturation, we know he was prodigal, not because he was rebellious, but because he was immature. His father actually gave him permission to go out there and discover yourself. And he had an encounter where he came to himself, where through a series of decisions, he ends up in the pig pan. But in this particular text, it's interesting if we go down, starting from verse number um, 16, the Bible talks about him having an experience after he was sent uh, into uh, this this country to fill uh, to, into a field to feed swines. Now, if you read uh, scriptures when the Bible uh, uh, begins to talk about how Jesus taught concepts, he taught parables. And here we have another parable that is speaking uh, spoken uh, of uh, to the disciples by Jesus. And he was talking to them about the power of decisions. Uh, and he used the example of a man having two sons. One decided to stay with his father and the other decided to go out and to uh, uh, find himself in the world. He comes to a place where he hits rock bottom. And verse number 16 said, when he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, no man gave unto him and when he came to himself, he said, um, how many of my hired servants or many, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and earth. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And the Bible said, and he arose and came to his father. And then he took 100% responsibility after he kissed and did all of the formalities. He said, I've sinned against heaven and earth, being able to take 100% responsibility for his life. Now, it's interesting because when we talk about destiny, a lot of people, it's still kind of mysterious uh, concerning uh, how we should live and what God has planned for our life. But destiny goes beyond just what God has planned for our lives. It's about us making a decision to be in sync with that plan. And uh, a lot of us live our lives um, pro, uh, reactive rather than proactive. And we have to become more proactive if we're going to see the will of God and the plan of God uh, being expressed uh, in, in, in such a way where we are actually making a difference in our industry, in this world, in our families, uh, as ambassadors of Christ. Now, when he said to himself, in other words, up until that point, he was driven by external um, forces and even internal forces, one of them being immature, immaturity. But when you mature in the things of the Lord, you will begin to discover that one of the greatest battlefields is your own mind. And um, the wrestle that we have every single day, what's right, what should I do? There's so many options. Who, who should I invite into my life? Who shouldn't I invite into my life? There's so much that is coming at us. But in Luke chapter 14, if you would turn there with me, please, to verse number 28 to 30. The Bible said, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and it is not able to finish, all who see it began to mock, mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. So which of you intending? This is the law of intention, and that word intending comes from a Greek word, velo, velo, which means to will or to purpose or to determine or to resolve. When it comes to you making decisions, these are resolutions that you are making. You're resolving within your own self. It is, it is an act of will. It's not an act of skill, but it's an act of will. Which of you intending? Because a lot of times we say, well, I don't have the education. I don't have the skill. But making a difference, doing something better, being able to improve the quality of your life, being able to improve the quality of your family, being able to send your children to the best of schools is not a skill. It's will. It's an act of, of your will. Which of you intending, using your will to build a tower? 
and does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it. So you're going to sit down, you're going to meditate. So you go from intentions to thought. A lot of people don't have the future they dream of because they don't put enough thought into it. We allow other people's thoughts to determine where we're going. But as you think in your own heart, what you think about yourself, what you think that you are worth, what you think that, that you can do, that's exactly what you're going to do. That's exactly what you're going to own because these are your thoughts. The Bible said, lest after he laid the foundation and is able to finish um, and, and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. So this is action. So you go from intention to thought to action. So when it comes to your life, this is how uh, destiny is birthed. It's birthed uh, with, with these three different, it flows from these three different dimensions. So destiny flows from the dimension of thought and manifests itself as a product of intention and action through obediently following the word of the Lord. So these are the three processes by which you make life decisions that, that maintains or alters the path you take in life. So if you want to alter it, it's going to take thought, intention, and action. If you want to stay on the same path, it's going to take thought, intention, and action. You have to live your life intentionally. It's not about skill. It's about will. Listen to this. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not eat from the king's table, and he didn't. David purposed in his heart that he would not sin against God. Which of you intending to build? Which of you are, have, have purpose in your heart? Which of you intending to build? It didn't only say build, it goes on. Which of you intending to battle? So it means to fight for something. We're either going to fight for a cause or we're going to fight for our rights. And I think about Gandhi and Martin Luther King and Mandela and Jesus. I think about women's rights and human rights and cancer and HIV and human trafficking and education and health care. Somebody is fighting for a cause. So if God is calling you as a change agent, an agent of change, and if he's going to use you to make a difference in your family, in your community, in industry, in this world, you're either going to intend to do something or to fight for something. We want to fight for our family. We want to fight for our rights. And you're going to come up against opposition, but you don't fight because you're being opposed. Opposition is there to determine how bad you want something and also so for you to build muscle so that when God elevates you and promotes you, you have the muscle power to be sustained in that new realm or new level of influence or dominion or wherever God is taking you. I think about the woman with the issue of blood. It's in Matthew chapter uh, 9, verse uh, 20 to 22. The Bible said that she had been fighting for so long for her health. And the Bible said it was 12 years that she was fighting for her health. She wanted to get her health back. But then one day she happened across Jesus and she said in herself, listen to this. She said in herself, this is a product of thought. If I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. That's an intention. I intend, here's my thoughts, I don't want to be sick. What do you want? I want to be healed. How are you going to get there? Intention. And that intention led to an action. She touched the hem of his garment, and Jesus said, be of good comfort, thy faith have made you whole. Those are the three elements, her thoughts, her intention, her action. When you intend to do something, heaven conspires with earth to bring the resources together in order for your intentions to become a reality. People who try never succeed. You've got to intend to do it. You remember Star Wars and they have Yoda and Yoda had this phrase, do or do not. You're either going to do it or you're not going to do it, but you're not going to intend to do something. If you intend to hit a, excuse me, if you try to hit a ball, you're never going to hit it. But if you say, I intend to hit that ball, you're going to hit the ball. 